and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to yet another episode of the 3 in the 13th show. I'm 3, jersey number 3, Varun. And I am 30, jersey number 13, Rakov. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, in today's episode, we give you the story of someone whose hard work on the court, all the accolades put together, earned her the nickname Big Shot Brown, one of the most brilliant players to play in the WNBA, the ninth overall draft pick in WNBA in 2018, one of the best shooters in the game, one of the best playmakers, plays as a guard for the Minnesota Lakes. We bring to you the story of Lexi Brown. Hey guys, thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm really excited to answer these questions for you guys. I really appreciate it. Let's get started. And our first question is, we all know that your father played in the NBA for 12 years. So was it the motivation from there that you decided to become a women's NBA player? So yeah, my dad played in the NBA and obviously I have basketball in my blood. So uh, I knew that I wanted to play when I was just really young. Um, he never forced me to play, nothing like that. Um, I think I just gradually got, you know, acclimated to being in the gym, being around, you know, basketball players, basketball teams. It was just something that I eventually grew up loving to something that I grew up loving to do. Um, and just having him being a part of it just made it that much better. So Lexi, in the U.S., draft day is one of the biggest days for any college athlete. It's considered to be the next big step to stardom. You were the ninth overall pick. What were your emotions? So draft day, that was the best day of my life. Um, I had my family with me, my mom, my dad, my sister, my aunt and uncle were there. Um, spent a weekend in New York. Um, it was just amazing. Uh, when I finally heard my name being called, it was just like, it was happiness, it was relief, it was excitement. It was just knowing that all that time that we put in uh, finally was paying off. And just that moment of just like that deep breath of just like, we did it. Like, I know my dad and my mom, like they, they were smiling more than I was the whole weekend. So it was just fun uh, to see that I was making them so proud and, you know, all the blood, sweat and tears, the, the road trips, the AAU tournaments the training sessions that, you know, it all was worth it in the end. You have played for two universities, University of Maryland first, and then the Duke University. And in your sophomore year, you got the nickname Big Shot Brown. So please tell us about your college experience and also how was the feeling getting a nickname like that when you were only in your sophomore year? So, yeah, I'm... Committed to Maryland when I was 15, I think. I was about to be a sophomore in high school, and I decided to commit early because Maryland was just a place that I had fallen in love with. Um, I loved it there. The coaching staff was great. The D.C. The College Park area was amazing. The campus was beautiful. Um, I just felt like it was a really good fit for me. Um, so I went there. I had a great two seasons in Maryland. Uh, got to win a Big Ten tournament championship. Um, one out most outstanding player of the tournament. We went to two Final Fours. It was just a really, really great experience. Um, but that Big Ten move, um, you know, I gave it a chance, and I just did not like that conference compared to the ACC. Um, you know, my dreams have always been ACC basketball. Um, and then, you know, our coaching staff made some changes, so I felt like at that moment it was the right time for me to make a change as well. Um, wanted to be back in the ACC. Um, and you know, I left the ACC with that nickname, Big Shot Brown, and I always thought it was funny because I've never made like a buzzer beater or a game winner or anything. I like make those shots that like break the other team's spirit, breaks their back. Like we're up two with 30 seconds to go and I'll hit like a three or something or make a play to, you know, get us a basket when we need it. So I loved having that nickname. It was really fun. And I, you know, I love those moments and I loved having teammates and coaches that, you know, wanted me to be in those moments and, I got to Duke and it was just an amazing experience there as well. Not many people can have one great college experience and I had two. So that was just a huge blessing for me. Uh, I loved being there. The school was amazing. My teammates, coaching staff, 
Um, you know, I was super blessed to have the type of college career that I had because, you know, I got to achieve so many things on and off the court um, and then achieve my dreams after. So it was a lot of hard work. It was tough at times, but I wouldn't trade it for the world. So what were your emotions in your first WNBA game? Can you just run through them for us? Was it like you always dreamt of? And what were your feelings when you got traded to the Minnesota Lynx? Um, so my first WNBA game was, it was exciting, you know, to put on that jersey for the first time and have my name on the back, my number, you know, it was just a lot of emotions. Um, my rookie season, I didn't really play that much. So I think I got to, I think I played in the first game because we were winning by a lot. So, um, you know, it was kind of disappointing that, you know, at that moment, like that was my role on the team. You know, we were up 20, you last off the bench. But to even have that experience at all, my first game, some rookies don't even get to play at all in their first game. So um, it was exciting. Um, you know, my legs was real cold when I got in there. So I was r running like a robot, but um, it was amazing. And when I did this, when I um, found out that I had gotten traded, um, it was like getting drafted all over again. And I knew that I was going to a team where I'd be able to, you know, play probably a lot more than I had played in Connecticut, which I was correct about. But um, knowing that a, another team was ready to take a chance on me and believed in my skills and, you know, the person that I am made me really happy and really excited. COVID-19 has affected all, almost everyone in the world. So please tell us about the WNBA bubble experience in Florida and also how was it playing without fans, I guess maybe for the first time in your life. Okay, so the bubble, so let me say this about the bubble. The first thing I'm gonna say is that the WNBA did an amazing job of getting that together and making it an environment that we felt safe in and comfortable in. Um, for me personally, I did not like living in a bubble. It was really tough for me emotionally and mentally. Um, I'm a person that needs to separate basketball in real life and when you're in the bubble basketball is is real life and real life is basketball and I didn't um I did not thrive in that situation I don't think personally I think a lot of players you know felt the same it was just a really weird type of situation it was a blessing that we were able to even play um and get our full salaries and have a platform for uh things that for social justice initiatives um but overall like it was hard. And if anybody says it wasn't hard, then they're lying. So um, it was nice to see a lot of the players and a lot of my friends that play on other teams that I normally wouldn't see uh, during the season. But for the most part, like we didn't really have any practice. You know, I'm a, I'm a player that needs practice. You know, if I'm having, you know, a little rough patch in games, like if I get in practice, I could shake that off. You know, I didn't really have that opportunity in the bubble. But, you know, we still had a great season. Finished fourth, could have finished higher, but we just were dealing with some injuries. I unfortunately suffered a concussion um, that probably should have been season ending, but um, you know I pushed through that, which is anybody listening ever get a concussion, do not do that. That is not smart because it is 10 weeks later and I'm still dealing with symptoms from a concussion that I suffered from at the end of July. It's September, it's October now. Um, but overall, I mean, I'm just glad that we were able to have a season because we all love playing basketball and, you know, it's been a hard year for a lot of people. So the fact that we were able to go back and do the thing that we love, you know, definitely helped. During your college career, you made the All-American team three times. You had over 2,000 points, 500 assists and 250s, three-pointers, and you led the nation in steals. How do you maintain the standard? and deliver it game after game. I maintain my standard of playing and, you know, performing just because I I hold myself to such a high standard. So if I don't play my best or at least give my best effort, then I'm disappointed. It doesn't matter what the stat sheet says. Usually, you know, I can tell when I'm locked into a game and, I, and I'm giving my 110% effort. And if that's there, I mean, it usually translates to a pretty good game, but, um, I just don't want to let myself down. I don't want to let my family down. You know, they sacrificed so much for me to be 
here. Um, have this career. I play basketball for a living. It's it's amazing. It's a blessing. A lot of people, you know, would never have this opportunity. So every time I go out there, I just make sure that you know I, I at least give my best effort. What do you think your rating will be in NBA 2K22? Your NBA 2K21 rating was 76. Um. Okay. So my my 2K rating this year it might stay the same, honestly, because or it might go up one because I had like two really good games. And if I could get some skills that improved, probably like defense and stuff. So I want to say I'm, I'm gonna give myself like a 78 for 2K22. All right, build your perfect team. Name six players for their shooting, mentality, defending, handles and passing, and clutch. Um, six players. Me shooting. The um, my shooting. Uh. Asia Wilson's blocking ability, uh, Candace Parker's uh, basketball IQ, um, Alicia Clark from the Storm, her defense, that's four. Um, I'm gonna go with Maya Moore for the clutch. No, let me take that back, I'm going with Diana. Sorry, Maya, I love you. Um, and then I'm going to go with Sue Bird for leadership. And I think that is a great player. I think that's your perfect player. Who were your sporting idols growing up? And have you had a fan girl moment till now? Some of my idols growing up, uh, I didn't have many, but one was definitely Christy Tolliver. She went to Maryland as well. She still plays in the W. Um, she was one of the reasons why I picked Maryland. And she came to a practice one day when I was there and I almost passed out right there on the court. Um, definitely had a fangirl moment um, after practice. I was freaking out. Uh, I got to pick her brain after practice and it was just the most amazing moment of my best early basketball career. And then just coming full circle last season, we scrimmaged, you know, the Mystics and we were guarding each other and it was just normal. And I was just like, I can't believe like I'm here. And, like, so that moment was cool too. Do an impression of your favorite athlete or celebrity. I don't do impressions of actors. I do impressions of characters. Um, so my favorite character. Oh no. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm gonna do. Uh, I'll do Shaquille O'Neal because it's easy when he's like, uh, they do football and basketball and they're really good and they're. Uh. <laughs> In the most, rather the the favorite part of your career so far for you? My favorite moment so far is um, my total career. So I'm going to just say from college and, and pro was making my first Final Four. That's definitely been hands down one of the best moments of my career so far. One word that describes you is funny. I'm funny, y'all. And my humor is very dry and it takes a special type of person to really understand my humor. But even if you don't understand it, some of the things I say like is really funny. So I would say that I'm really funny. This is a very tough one for any, any basketball player playing in the NBA or the WNBA. Would you, would you become an MVP and never win a championship or you would win a championship and never become an MVP? I would definitely pick winning a championship because um, that's something special and that's something that's a moment you can share with your team, your coaches, and your organization and the whole city. So winning a championship definitely beats winning MVP and never winning a championship. Which feeling was better? Winning the ACC Defensive Player of the Year 2018 or making it in the ACC first team and defensive team for two years in a row? Winning Defensive Player of the Year. That was the best feeling because so many people used to tell me that I would never be a good defender. And boom, I won Defensive Player of the Year. Would you rather ensure over time or risk losing and win in regulation time? Oh, ensure over time. Like, why would you not want to guarantee W? So, yeah, I haven't played in any overtime games yet in my professional career either. So I think that's crazy. Would you rather make the game-winning shot yourself or give the assist to another teammate? Oh, I'd rather take it. Let me take that shot. 
I, would, I, I need a game winner in my life. I need one. Would you rather have a stadium named after you or an award? I'm going to go with an award because usually when you have a place named after you, you have to pay for it. But when you have an award for something, uh, you have exuded, you know, a behavior that is admirable. So I pick an award. Would you rather always lose the championships or never make the playoffs? I would always lose championship. Playoff basketball is so fun and the experience is something that like every player deserves to experience. So I would definitely rather always lose in the championship than never make the playoffs. Thank you guys so much for having me. That was fun. Uh, so much love to you guys. India, shout out to y'all. So there you have it, ladies and gents, boys and girls, the story of a champion who is grinding it out on the court day after day and delivering impeccable performances every game. Next week, another story for all of us to be inspired. Till then, be safe.